Hey y'all, I'm gonna be reacting to Seven Knights Ebel Revolution Hero Successor Episode 1. I'll be watching it from Crunchyroll's website and I will be starting my reaction in 1-0 go. Alright. Can't wait to see what this one's gonna bring because Key Visual makes it look like it's gonna be fantasy and action based. Pretty dark start though, if you ask me, with all the destruction though. Holy. Aww. If this draw ends up being one of the. Interesting though, with it starting out with some singing. You know, I'd be kind of scared of holding a doll that's on fire unless she's got flame manipulation abilities, that is. I was just excited though, the song itself does sound pretty good though. Well, the singing from the girl, I should say. I just wonder if she's doing to try to see if there's any survivors. Oh, oh! Hmm. Okay. Well, at least now we know. Well, one of their main goals for now, when it comes to them looking for some successors. Okay. At least they present the character goal without it being any type of pointless, artificial bit of exposition at the very least. Okay, that explains it then. At least if the opening is implying that some of our characters are going to be flame molders at the very least, going by how the cards that are holding are heating up. Now, going by the imagery of the opening, seems like all these, um, yeah, seems like they're going to have either transformation abilities by the looks of things. Or they might be able to summon something from those cards that Looks like they're wilders, one of the two elements. Okay, the action in the opening actually looks pretty darn rock solid. I just hope that this series can live up to the cool looking opening though, because at least a lot of animes I've seen, it's really rare to see an anime actually live up to their opening. It is doable though, I've seen it before. Just it ain't freaking commonplace. Okay, I gotta admit, the opening actually, um, uh, gotta admit, it's got me pumped up. At least enough to where, even if, say, the first episode does full things, it's got me to, enough to where I'm gonna want to give this at least a three episode roll. In the worst case scenario. Okay, that kid. Kind of looks similar to one of the opening characters. Kind of. Well, let's hope this time she actually makes it in time. <laughs> no, no, she will. She is going to make it in time because... I don't think they'd have the same plot point repeat itself where she fails to protect people back to back, you know? Whoa! Ew! I'm kind of glad it panned away. I didn't want to see that gorgeous lady said get back. Oh my. 
I'm glad they didn't eat anything in the last few hours. Jeez. Wait, so they can reanimate dead corpses into other beings then? Okay, that is just absolutely funky. Like on some zombie like status right there. Now I think one of two things are gonna happen. One, the girl's gonna show up in the nick of time to rescue the boy, or the boy's gonna unlock some kind of deep hidden ability when he sees someone's in danger and he's gonna end up being a badass. I think one of those two is likely gonna happen. I mean, I'm not gonna blame him for his sense of pessimisticness, especially not in this type of scenario. But regardless, though, he should keep on running just in the scenario where someone does actually manage to show. Jeez! Oh, I thought for a second one of the rocks grazed his arm or something vicious. Oh, it did! Fucking finally! Some help showed up. I mean, hell, if they can at the very least rescue one person, it's at least better than nothing. I mean, I hope for their sake they can rescue more than just a single person, though. Gotta admit, despite the injuries, it's impressive the boy's still holding up pretty well. All things considered, and especially considering he doesn't have any, like, offensive capabilities from the... Yo, I like this chick. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any time for him to be going gaga right now. That's some amazing self-awareness. Actually, I like that bit of characterization there. Showing them that, yes, she selfless enough to protect someone and also selfless enough to actually take a hit for a civilian. I think that's cool. They're giving us bits of, char of the characters' personalities during combat scenarios. Damn, you're looking badass. <laughs> Yo. Oh, you just got those extra pieces of butter! Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, those are cat like reflexes. <laughs> Being able to still protect a boy from that type of long distance. And you know what I like about the choreography, too? You actually see the enemies constantly try to surround her, try to hoard the boy to get a upper hand against her. From a visual standpoint, it's all well done. Because in a lot of animes, whenever you see enemies, surround someone and the person they're protecting, they usually only attack the fighter. You usually don't see them try to protect the, I mean, try to hit the object that's being protected. So that's why I like the action sequence. Oh, that's cute. It was actually well directed. All right. So far it's doing a good job of living up to its opening. Hell, even if he doesn't like coffee, might as well be inclined of drinking it. That means Capo's got some pretty baller taste. Well, he's supposed to accompany with food, though, with sweets. No, I think she served it to her boy the right way. It's just that she probably should have, like, had it accompanied with some sweets and it would have worked out. Well, because he would have straight up died if she didn't do, if she didn't do that. And plus, everything turned out fine. Oh. Oh. Oh, 
that's awfully sweet. And, he, and I wouldn't be surprised if the boy Deep Elm wishes that he would have been stronger. Strong enough to protect some people and the villagers. The fuck? Damn, that's some efficiency. You've already got five towns desecrated like that. That is a cute name. You need me up? And you know, since the boy doesn't know all this, it's actually, we're learning the, all this information alongside our main protagonist, too. So, I gotta also appreciate the natural exposition dumps. It doesn't feel artificial one bit. And I love how they have some stylistic images, too, to also represent information, because if they didn't just had her talking... Without it panning to say what's going on, on the outside or some of that storybook like quality in that one shot, the exposition sequence wouldn't have had that visual punch. So I don't know if you can really tell the production quality in the series is uh, really complimentary produced, even from like the detailed carpet, the detailed seating. I'm gonna be surprised if the boy has all the potential in the world. <laughs> Whoa! Well, considering the danger level, let's hope that actually ends up being the case because they're gonna need it! What the fuck? Damn! <laughs> that thing don't give a fuck! But you know, I do like this because it shows that in the series, the main characters could never let their guard down. Wait, no, no, don't tell me the sweet one lady died. No, 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 no. Okay, at least Freya's still alive. Honestly, she's gonna, he's gonna definitely owe Freya. And that's just what the thing knocking the train. The thing is though, she's, uh, looks like she's got a foot already at death's doorstep though. That's the thing. Damn! I think it looks like it could leave and level a town when, if it lands a direct hit. Maybe if she were in full condition, she could probably handle it, but not with all those scratches and bruises. Oh, never mind. What the fuck? No, no fucking way. Um, I wonder if it's too late for a tactical retreat. Boy, did that just think this gets stronger? What the? Fuck. And the thing is, Freya can't be worrying about the boy. I mean, she doesn't even know the limitations of that thing's regeneration, regenerative abilities. I love how she's actually stepping on the creature's arms to try to still get a grasp of her environment. It gives the scene, fights in a lot of weight. And it makes it more dynamic. Because you see the creature constantly attacking, even when they're vulnerable. I actually dig stuff like this. And the animation smears when she moves her um, weapon they're looking beautiful, too. I 
I don't think there's no fucking way he's gonna do that. It would be nice if that thing could vaporize it completely, but... But from Fred, from Fred, I'm thinking, oh. And plus, you did say that there's a possibility that the boy could end up being the strongest out of all of them. Everyone's always got a possible. Oh, shit! They're right, Theo! I'm assuming he drew probably one of the most strongest abilities. I mean, he does have all the Protac card, and usually the Protac card sets a main protagonist for a great heights, especially when they're in danger in the first episode. Hmm. Oh. I'm assuming he's gonna want to pretend. Oh. Oh, that's awfully sweet. Whoa, whoa, what? I mean, why wouldn't he? I mean, Freya, literally, she risked her life twice. I think it's only fair that. If he does end up giving his life to Saber, it's only fair he praise the favorite because Frieza's already saved her his life twice over. I mean, at least that's why I believe deep down Nemo wants to do this to repay back the solid. Not a lot of people would uh, risk themselves twice to save you well, if you're a random stranger. Some people would, but most people wouldn't. Hmm. Maybe it's one of his um, ancestors. I don't know, that's my guess. Oh my. Jeez, okay, gotta admit, that creature has some um, massive amounts of creativity. Yes! Our boy is about to go in. Well, you know what to say, there's a first time for everything. I um, mean, he's definitely got the heart of one if he's willing to give up his life to save Freya, so. Ain't no doubts about him being. Yo! <laughs> he's going in hardcore! And just the way he's provisionally moving his arm as if he's. as if it's been a part of his body, that arm piece for his whole life! Wait, don't tell me he's gonna actually be able to get a last free his weapon too. <laughs> oh lord! And I like that he's uh, running on the creature to try to get into an elevated advantage. And I love how he's now utilizing his own weapon arm. Oh! I actually like that, it respects Freya so that she can also have a contributing factor in the fight too. And it doesn't just put everything for Nemo to resolve the fight solo. I actually like this. Because most enemies like this would be tempted to ha give the main character a badass moment to have the main character completely overshadow the experienced character in the first episode. I'm liking how this anime isn't falling for those trappings at the very least. So that's a good sign. 
I like how the moment he's thinking about Heart's Desire shows very other. Now that is a nice visual cue there. Because it shows his desire with actions and visuals instead of it just being happening to our heads. Through... <laughs> yeah, okay, there's no way I think it's going to be able to generate from that. <laughs> and I like the usual trip we see in a lot of animes where badasses don't look at explosions. But that was beautiful, like the way you see the body of the creature bow up before it blew up. Really made it look more magnificent. Yeah, I mean, there's no ins and buts about it. Probably shine Emma. Damn it, boy, just shit the hand! <laughs> yes! Good shit! Yes, man! I already love that blooming friendship there, y'all. Okay, I'm, I'm hyped, I'm hyped. It was actually better than I was imagining. I thought going in, this is going to be like, okay, average, but no, this ended up being better than I could have imagined. Jeez. It's felt so long since I've seen a fantasy anime that's been encouraging. All right, I'm just going to look at the ED. As far as EDs go, you get your usual EDs you get in most animes. Bunch of stills, which there's nothing wrong with that because it's not the actual episode. As long as it's limited to ADs, then I don't mind too much. At least the artwork in the ADs looks good. The song's smooth, though. I, I mean, I like it. I guess looking at this, it's seemingly going to be a lot of school slice of life like moments. Which I don't know how I feel about that because this episode was sort of amazing with like the action set pieces. It going to like slice of life school stuff. I mean I guess if as long as the grinding is great, then I guess it'll be fine. Provided it's that's done anyways. I'm assuming she's directing that smell towards now. That's cute. Okay, the academy looks so gargantuan. Damn. All right, all right. Actually, I wouldn't mind seeing Nemo actually train himself up so that he can become more of a badass. It may make you feel more realistic. I always love it when you see our main characters and animes work hard getting their power of building it up, and then they truly become super badasses. Not having it all gift wrapped towards them from like the gecko. So that's another reassuring sign. All right, I can get behind this. Now, if I were to say rate this episode on a scale of one to 10, one being abysmal, five being average, and 10 being exceptional, it was actually, um, I'm actually gonna give it a 7.5 out of 10 for above average. It's actually one of the better starts of the season. While it isn't like say, Coming in loaded with like intense stuff like say uh, Shaman King or Eden Zero. From a visual standpoint, the holy shit, it's actually one of the prettier animes. So I'll give it a lot of credit there. Now, in saying that, this episode, I liked its premise for the most part. At least we see Freya's main goal, which is to try to save people she can come across before going to the school. I like that. 
we get bits of her personality where she's willing to literally give up her life to protect someone else, seeing how much passion she's got for her friends or even for strangers. There was something really beautiful in that, and I think that made her an even more charismatic main character. And that's what really stood out to me in this episode in a positive way. That's why I was a fan. I'm a fan of its first episode. And on top of that, even though, yes, there really isn't much I could say about Nemo, aside from it was badass when he participated in some of the action, at least they give us enough characterization to know that, okay, he's got some self-confidence issues, but he'll probably work towards that and become more confident as the series progresses. That's going to be my guess. And I also like how he's got some of those self-sacrificial traits, too, when he was willing to give up his life in exchange for power. So I cannot wait to see where the implications of that are going to go. If they do anything with it, though. If they don't do anything with it, it's going to be disappointing. Because that made it really intriguing. Eh? And that's why I felt it did pretty well for itself from a story standpoint. Well, yes. Furiai and Nemo aren't the most detailed characters that you would see in a first episode. They get the job done. The action set pieces were really entertaining, though. I gotta give it credit for that. I thought they were cool, dangerous, smooth looking. You can understand what was going on. It didn't feel like in any moments the enemy creatures or the main protagonists were doing anything stupid. It was amazing, the action parts. The voice performances are great, and I like the music, and that's why, yeah, I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. I really dug it, and I'm definitely looking forward to episode 2. Now, anyways, y'all, these are my thoughts on the episode. Be sure to comment out your thoughts on how I feel about my reaction or the...